So, this process is very similar to the Mentos and Pop videos you, you might have seen on, on the internet. Basically what's happening is that when these bubbles form, it's that CO2 gas that's in there. But, just like a raindrop has to collect around something to become a raindrop before it falls, the same thing has to happen with carbon dioxide. Lots of your glasses, they might have maybe some spot on the side where there's just a stream of bubbles coming up. So the, the gas needs somewhere to actually collect before it goes. Now raisins, because they're all nice and wrinkly, provide an excellent spot for that. So the bubbliest place in this entire glass is on those raisins. So we can see as the bubbles start to form, lots of times in kind of the exact same spots on the raisins, it's because that's just a really good place where it can actually collect together. Once it gets enough of the gas collected together, that's what makes the bubble. When it goes all the way up to the top, once it gets there, it's able to pop. Once it pops, the raisin's going to drop back down. So what's it making it, what's making it go up and down then? The reason it's going up and down is because of buoyancy. Buoyancy is just how dense it is. So if you have something, well the raisins sink before because they're more dense than the water. They have more mass in the same area. In order for them to float, they have to be able to, to become not lighter. The raisins aren't losing any weight. They're just attached to something that is less dense. So if you attach something like a rock to a balloon, it might be able to float. Problem is, once it gets up to the top, the little balloon of air gets popped. That gas escapes. If the gas runs is, is able to float away, it's not attached to the heavy raisin anymore, so then the raisin drops back down. So it's not a matter of weight. It's not that the raisins weigh any more or less, it's that they're attached to something that can make them more buoyant. It makes them less dense than, than the water, and so they're able to float away. Yay, raisins. Oh, almost forgot. Why didn't the pasta work for me? I talked about in the beginning how we would look at maybe what would make a better pasta for this. So if you didn't have raisins, you could use that. Again, the thing that makes the bubbles bubble is that there are little tiny places for the gas to collect in order to make a bubble. If it's still attached to the piece of spaghetti or the piece of pasta or the raisin, if it's able to get enough, then it's able to float. So the reason the spaghetti didn't work out was it just sat up there. It didn't do anything. It maybe got a few bubbles, but it was dense enough that it would need so many bubbles to, to carry it that it wasn't able to produce those bubbles. So maybe you could look for a pasta that's a little bit more porous that would have more spaces for the bubbles to actually get produced. Maybe you could look for a pasta that's less dense, so it's already closer to floating. Maybe cooked spaghetti. So does cooked spaghetti work? Because if it's cooked, it's already absorbed some water, so that means it's a little bit closer to water, so it doesn't have as much to, uh, as much bubbling action to, to make it actually float. So, uh, maybe you can try those, see if that works out for you.